Understanding the physics of internal compressible flows is important for several engineering applications ranging from aircraft inlets to designing engine exhaust nozzles and wind tunnel facilities. Internal compressible flows are confined wall-bounded flows where compressibility of a fluid plays a major role. Transportation of compressed natural gas from one location to another is an excellent example of such an internal flow. A compressed gas occupies less volume and the natural gas is either compressed into its liquid state or is gasified from its liquid state back to its gaseous form during its transportation. A good understanding of the internal compressible flow is important for design and operation of these transportation networks. In this course, we will focus our attention on such internal flows. Most aerospace vehicles use nozzles to generate a greater thrust force. They increase the kinetic energy of the exhaust gas by changing its pressure and internal energy. There are several types of nozzle configurations. The converging-diverging nozzles are a common design in supersonic aircrafts and space vehicles. Similarly, separate jet exhaust nozzles are used commonly in modern commercial aircrafts for high bypass ratios. In this course, we will learn extensively about compressible flows in converging-diverging nozzles and study the importance of inlet-exit pressure ratio for such nozzles. Engineers designing aircraft engine inlets also rely heavily on the principles of internal compressible flows. The inlet is designed to decelerate the incoming airflow to subsonic speeds and direct this flow into the compressor. This is done to remove flow disturbances and ensure a uniform flow into the combustor, thereby increasing the engine's performance. The deceleration of incoming supersonic flow occurs through a series of oblique shocks and expansion waves and a terminal normal shock beyond which the flow is fully subsonic. Similarly, the inlets of turbofan engines used in commercial aircrafts, which generally operate in transonic flow regimes, are designed to diffuse or restrict the shock wave developed at the inlet lip. This shock wave potentially occurs due to flow acceleration past the inlet lip and is detrimental to the engine rotor. Wind tunnel facilities are commonly used to conduct experimental aerodynamic tests on aircrafts, ground vehicles and other objects during their design phase. Even though the object being designed is for external flow applications, the wind tunnel facility itself is an example of an internal compressible flow system where the incoming air is accelerated to the required speed in the test section. These facilities make use of large nozzles to achieve high-speed transonic and supersonic flows before the test section. Beyond the test section, the air is decelerated to low subsonic velocities using diffusers. In this course, we will understand how these nozzles and diffusers are arranged in a modular fashion to generate the necessary supersonic flow conditions inside these wind tunnels. Furthermore, we will also understand the method of characteristics to design these internal flow structures. With that, let's wrap up this lesson.